Welcome to the Data Challenge. We're excited to be working with you today in order to outline what data is available in the challenge in each of the categories. We realize there is a lot of information being thrown at you in this video, so feel free to pause it at any point in order to focus just on the category that applies to you. Please note, if you're in the more advanced categories, you are expected to take into account the categories and the data that's available to you in the other levels. If you have not yet watched video one and video two related to the challenge, please go back and watch those first and then come back to this video, which outlines the data that's available. In the novice category, we would like your help in understanding the context of the soybean market as it relates to the multiple variables that are available in the data set. The data set is very wide, so make sure that you scroll across and that you're looking at all of the columns available. We would like to understand what are the variables that are important and which ones are not correlated or not needed for us to be considering as farmers. And we'd love to see some feature engineering as necessary. Your creativity will definitely come into play with this data set. The data that's available is USDA data, and it is already adjusted for exchange rates, which is a key thing to be considering when you're looking at market data. It is data that is monthly from 1970 to present, although you will see that there are some projections for 2019, and those are highlighted in blue so that you can differentiate them. Please take a look at the columns that are specific to soybeans, but we did include the other commodities and there's a reason for that. And we hope that you can help us understand some relationships that are a little more complex or things that we weren't already aware of. There is a lot of market volatility this year and certainly you'll see that in any news article on a quick Google search. Um, we want to understand how does that take into account kind of the historical data? Are there any patterns of other years where there was as much market volatility as this year? And how should we be considering that when we market our soybeans? We recognize that it's a little bit hard when you don't have the context to think of where do you get started on your data set. So we wanted to include a few thought starters that would be of high value to farmers. We expect that you'll expand beyond this, but it's a place to get started. So number one is what trends do you see in the US soybean exports? Number two is what seasonality do you see in the data? Number three, are there any relationships between commodity exports? Think about substitutable products. Four, are we trade neutral for agricultural products in a given month or year? And does that impact the soybean market? And number five, does competitor exports of soybeans impact the US exports of soybeans? In the novice category, you'll be measured based on three things. The strength of the evidence that you provided around the relationships or key trends to monitor, the applicability in guiding the decisions around cell recommendations, and your creativity in informing a farmer's understanding of the market trends. In the undergraduate category, you have access to the data that is available to the novice category. In this category, however, we expect predictive modeling. The first model that we would like is predicted price of the commodity close. And you'll see that close price is in the data sets. There is three different data sets based on the different contract dates for Mar contracts in March, May, and July. We would also like for each of the dates, a sell versus hold recommendation. And finally, a predicted commodity price for December 6th. The most accurate teams will be announced at FASTCON on December 9th.
In the undergraduate category, you have access to the same data set that the novice category did. Please use it as you see fit. You also have access to some additional data sets. The trading price by date for the three contract periods, soybean historical stocks, and the oil crops outlook. As you look at these data sets, you'll see that the trading price is your target variable. You'll be measured against close, but we kept the open, high, and low information in the data set for you to use. Additionally, the soybean historical stocks show critical supply and demand information. And please note, it's not just for soybeans, and that might be insightful as well. The oil crops outlook provides insight in context of other oil seed prices. And here's a tip for actually listening to this audio. Go check out the cover tab. It provides some context as to why the prices are so important this year. What's really helpful to a farmer is understanding when they should sell their grain at peak or near peak prices. They already know their break even point. And so for them, they're trying to maximize their ability to get a return on investment, just as was described in video two. Your challenge is really to help predict the price at close and as you saw, simplifying that message to a sell or hold recommendation. Sometimes having some thought starters gives you a place to get some traction. And so we've included a few below. The first is, what is the price difference by contract date? The second is, is there a seasonality in the target variable for a given contract date? Is canola price predictive of soybean price? And finally, is there an effect of the delayed 2019 seeding on soybean prices? And there is some information about that in the Oil Crops Outlook dataset. Now for how you'll be measured in the undergraduate category evaluation. For the predicted commodity close, we are requesting that you provide a predicted price for September 3rd to October 31st for each of the distinct contract dates, March, May, and July. You will be measured against 10 total days between September and October, but we will not release exactly which days we will be using in those months. Your total measurement will be 30. For the second item as to the sell recommendation, it will be based on the accuracy of your recommendation. There will again be 30 measurements. We are going to look at scoring you by points. So the sell recommendation within 16 cents of the max price, or approximately 10%, will be worth 10 points. A hold recommendation within 16 cents of the minimum price will again be worth 10 points. A hold recommendation within 16 cents of the max price will be negative five points. And a sell recommendation within 32 cents of the min price will be minus five points. We will also take a look on December 7th in evaluating your end of day prediction for December 6th. The most accurate team for each of the three contract dates, which will be aggregated together, will be announced on December 9th at FASTCON. Good luck. In the graduate challenge, we're really looking to see your creativity. So we expect the same three predictive models that were discussed in the undergraduate challenge, but we'd also really like to see you differentiate yourself by including some additional data features. We have included a few new data sets and we've included some links below in order for you to access some additional data that will help you to increase your predictive accuracy. That includes things like macroeconomic conditions, so key export markets or competitive markets to the U.S. soybean market. What is the weather in Brazil? How are the fires in the rainforest impacting crop production? 
In addition, how is the geopolitical climate changing the soybean market? How do tweets impact what happens in soybean farmers' backyards? And how are the tariff wars impacting U.S. farmers? The ability to accurately predict these pieces of information that were outlined in the undergraduate challenge by incorporating additional data sets is really critical. You're helping the next generation of farmer to be equipped with the information and the intelligence to make profitable decisions. When you look at these additional data sets and consider how you could use them as features, we are really excited about understanding your creativity. We would love to know which countries weather matters. It would be really helpful to understand does Twitter activity affect prices? What time lag and for how long? Your creativity again will really help farmers make the best decisions. As we gave thought starters to the novice and the undergraduate categories, here's a few for you in the graduate category. But no, we're holding you to a pretty high standard because both Teresa and I have our graduate degrees. And so we know that you are our thought leaders and those that are gonna be pushing the boundaries. So the thought starters are, is there a lag between tweets related to agriculture and or trade and the markets for soybeans. We'd also like to know what are the most impactful indicators to watch for in the next top three soybean producing countries? Is it weather? Is it precipitation? Just a few ideas. And then what other data sources could we be using as macroeconomic indicators? And what's their relative importance? In the graduate category, your evaluation will be very similar to the undergraduate category in terms of predictive accuracy. You will again be measured on your predictive commodity closing end of day price, your sell versus hold recommendations, and your predicted commodity end of day price for December 6th. But we also will be looking for incorporation of additional data sources outside those that we provided you and communication of your results in a farmer-friendly format. So really trying to think about what is the way that you can communicate this that makes the most sense to a farmer throughout the year. Thanks for participating in the Soybean Data Challenge. We look forward to seeing your creativity and results. The information that has been included in this video is available in PDF format in the same Google Drive location as the data sets. We look forward to seeing your results and the impact that you can have in soybean marketing.